Hello everyone, it's Natasha Red here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of the Regal Royals. If you have not already, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you don't miss out on future uploads. And also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know how you feel about it in the comment section below. So I kind of want to start a new thing where I ask you guys a comment of the day in regards to this series. Sometimes it can be outside of this series, but my first one, I want to ask you guys what is your favorite character in the series and why? And it does not have to be a main character. I can't honestly say that I have a favorite because I love all of them, even the characters that like you guys probably could care less about, like the side characters and whatnot. I just love all of them and their little backstories. But anywho, let's go ahead and get started. So we are obviously in Sam Maishuno and reason why is because I want to showcase to you guys Siren while I talk to you guys about a few things before we get into the meat and potatoes of the episode. So Siren is in Sam Maishuno and we have not seen her in a while so I'm not going to give you a verbal update on her but I'll just let you see how she's doing. So let's go on ahead and peek in. So I have Siren on full autonomy so we're going to just enjoy whatever Siren has to show us. So I'm going to let her do her thing. She has a cat named Luna and here she is super cute and she dresses in red and black just like her mama. As you can see though this apartment siren has come a little ways she's been you know on her grind since she's been on her own but you can see this apartment definitely still needs some TLC so first I want to apologize to you guys for having such a long absence so not only is my game broken right now it's at least playable so I'm able to finally at least record but ever since the new um, high school years pack my game has been so broken and as a matter of fact I still can not enter into the world. Is it Copperdale? I don't know why I've been wanting to call it Cooperdale, but I believe it's called Copperdale. Copperdale has messed my game up, honey, because I cannot enter the world at all, even still. So that's a problem because I paid for this pack. I should be able to play it. I was going to review the pack and incorporate it into the story and everything, and I had to change that up. But anywho, so that was a big part of the delay. And then also I had a little mini vacay. I got to go to South Carolina and just relax for a little bit so I thought about doing some stuff while I was there but I said you know what no I'm just gonna relax take it easy take some time for my mental health and it was very therapeutic for me so I appreciate your guys's patience and I also wholeheartedly appreciate your support some of you have reached out from all over the world and I am just so incredibly grateful to you all for your patience and your support you just do not know it just melts my heart and makes me feel so happy that so many other people like what I have to put out there. But NT who I also just want to briefly mention the Instagram page, the Regal Royals. You can follow me there. I also made a Finsta. You don't really, I mean, if you want to see it, you can, but it's real dank, but I'll put a link in the description. So we're about to see in this episode, some more of the aftermath from the events that took place during the ball. I know we've been on this ball seems like damn near all year and I do apologize I promise we're almost done with it but I do want to make sure you know that I go in a good nice depth and details I have been posting some storyline posts on my Instagram which you might find very helpful so make sure you're tuned into that because some more posts are still coming from the event okay guys so just to give you the world's quickest briefest rundown of some of the events that were covered across IG with the little mini series photos from the ball. We have images from the Kings and Queens court of their arrival to the ball. We have a story post involving Grand Duchess Harley finally meeting the royal family and someone showcasing that they were not too thrilled to meet her which we will discuss more in this episode. We also had a two-part story post of Queen Leona and King Jared having a serious argument which involved Princess Diana which by the way if you do check those posts out there is serious trick trigger warnings for both and I will also put that in this episode because we're going to discuss that more as well. And then finally we have the explosive news of Princess Jewel and Tony's inappropriate activities during the ball 
which we covered more so in the last episode. So stay tuned for a few more story posts that will be coming on IG from the aftermath of the ball. So for today's episode, we will be visiting the Royal Windenburg family and seeing more of Grand Duchess Harley. We'll also be visiting the Royal Willow Creek family. And finally, we will also be going to visit the Royal family of Oasis Springs. So I hope you guys are excited. So let's go on ahead and get into it. Okay, so the party is continuing with the Windenburg. So we are here at the celebratory dinner for Grand Duchess Harley that King Harry was planning in her honor. And he wanted to do this not only to honor her at her first royal event appearance, but also to give her an opportunity to get to know the family a little bit better and for them to be able to, you know, see how they feel about her and whatnot. We have our little tots here, Princeton and Poppy. Um, oh, actually, this. This is Phoebe. This is Lady Phoebe who was born not too long ago. So you know how The Sims is. You don't have functional babies. So Phoebe is a newborn and you know the twins are a couple months old. So <laughs> you know they're really not supposed to be at that age yet where they can do all this traveling and oh my god because of the preset mod that I have. Look at how they're in this like are you okay? That is so disturbing. But anyways, we're gonna pretend that that's not a thing. And why are they all so broke? Wait, okay. That had me concerned for a second. Okay. So never mind them eating in the high chairs <laughs> like they're supposed to. They're gonna sit on the floor. Interesting. But anywho, we have some fancy punch and full dinner for them. I don't know why they won't sit down and eat. That is so dumb. Like you have a nice ass table here. Oh, well Harley's sitting. Let Oh, and she's sitting next to Queen Eleanor. So that is very interesting because... In the story post, you guys, Eleanor had something a little, a little shook in name for Harley. She basically told her, I'm keeping my eyes on you. I don't know that I fully trust you and your intentions. Never mind the fact that Harley did not reach out to them. They reached out to her. So she really doesn't have any ulterior motives in joining the royal family, but that's how Eleanor is feeling, which is very interesting. So while they're all in the same place, Harry actually wanted to talk to Hamish and he's like hey bruv how you doing bruv so he's trying to start off the conversation warm but he has to confront him about his behavior at the ball because Hamish actually brought an unauthorized guest so Harry is like hey man I've told you about bringing unauthorized guests to events especially that event that was not cool and Hamish is like please did you see how barbaric the other kingdoms acted nobody paid any attention to me like chill out basically harry is like i don't know why they're arguing through each other like this but harry was like look bro you need to grow up and stop acting so childish and whorish because it's a poor reflection on the family i think they stopped because they saw amelia coming over to tell them to knock it off oh no they're still going at it look at them hamish was basically like man piss off and i think that hamish is still kind of adjusting to following his brother's authority as king it's different with siblings they don't want to listen to the elder one but Harry is like look bro you didn't do any of this stuff while dad was king so don't think that you can start pulling stunts with me Harley is just like oh my goodness oh wow because she really hasn't gotten to know Hamish yet like she has Harry so let's have Amelia tell them to like hey cut it out like stop it knock it off I think that she probably thought coming over here helped them to stop oh one of them smiling one of them's angry <laughs> So I think Hamish is just a little salty because, you know, he doesn't want to listen to his brother. He sees him as his brother, but he needs to follow his authority as king. I'm glad they stopped before Amelia had to step in though. So Eleanor called over Grand Duchess Harley. Oh, wait, where is she going though? Where are they going? Okay, I guess they want to talk in a little bit more private. That's interesting that she called them over to the table then because I was thinking she was going to talk to Harley at the table. 
but really the only people that are, that are around are the babies. Oh, look at them. They're too cute. The babies and Winnie, who is showing flashcards to the literal heir. Like, girl, who are you showing those cards to? But okay, are y'all gonna say something or what? Finally! So, Dowager Queen Eleanor is like, Harley, it's so nice to have you here. She's asking her, how come her family isn't at this event? And you can see Harley is a little bit shook by that. Harley is probably saying to the queen, I just wanted to have just myself here to be able to focus on my duty since it was my first time at an event. And Eleanor's calling the cat. And she's like, are you sure that's really the reason i think it's so odd that we haven't met your family yet i especially want to meet your mother harley was trying to continue talking to her but she noticed she ran off oh looks like langston's trying to butter up things a little bit so yeah they're talking to each other but not directly i think that langston kind of sensed a little bit of tension he's probably saying to harley you'll have to excuse her you know this has been a little bit rough on her to accept this given that her husband just passed recently so Harley is probably trying hard to keep it in but probably feeling a little bit shook at the moment Ooh, so it looks like Eleanor was continuing to say stuff to Harley like she's kind of being a little mean throwing a little bit of jabs at her she was like I couldn't stand to be away from my children and my husband that long what does that say about you as a wife and mother and Amelia is probably saying okay mom that's enough Harley is starting to feel a little bit sad let's see the butler is about to get fired because all this funky ass food like y'all how ghetto where is the butler get this clean she's trying Trying to explain I have been going through a few difficulties but this has been quite overwhelming and just a lot of pressure on me I've been trying really hard to make sure I do my duties correctly and Eleanor is like yeah I'm sure you see she's trying to put on a happy face but she's actually quite sad like oh <laughs> filthy surroundings but I think that she's also sad because it's intimidating to step into a new realm of life like this and then for the person to be a little bit mean I think that Eleanor's anger is a bit misplaced because she's mad at Harley for being in the royal family now but it's like she grew up without her father that's far more hurtful than you having another person in the family you know like get over it Eleanor I don't know and I think Harley is like if you'll excuse me for a minute and oh bless her heart she looks like she's about to cry you guys oh no she's trying to dance it off I think and I think Amelia would probably like confront or not confront her Ooh, Amelia is tense oh cuz she is a loner like she's a very introverted so this is probably a lot for her especially after the ball and how people behaved at the ball this is probably too much but i think she would sense that harley is not okay she is very kind so she probably would ask harley like hey are you okay let's discuss sad mood yes i think that would be perfect you guys i literally had to take the tables away because all that funky food and this butler just standing here doing nothing but i think amelia called harley over and she's oh she gave her a nice greeting i'm trying to keep up with them amelia asked her like hey it looked like you were a little upset are you okay and harley is like i'm trying to be i'm having such a lovely time so it's not anything you guys are doing but it's just this is a little bit overwhelming for me amelia is like i understand Stand. I think that Amelia is trying to relate to her like hey when I first entered the royal family it was a little bit overwhelming for me too and you see Eleanor is in earshot don't think she's not listening to this conversation but Harley looks like she wants to say something and is kind of contemplating it but she is very sad and I know she's oh okay I think she's saying it you guys she's like I just gotta be honest I don't want to start off in this family with falsehoods so I just need to admit the reason why my family isn't here isn't just because I'm nervous it's because of the situation that happened at the club and she's admitting to Amelia she messed up with her husband Amelia's like oh my goodness I can't believe that happened even though it was fast for us she explained in detail the club situation to Amelia 
Maya and how that has messed up things in her relationship and how this is like a blessing and a curse because she is happy to finally be able to like provide for her family more comfortably but at the same time it has this cost of her relationships in the beginning and so Amelia is like you know I definitely cannot say that you know it's okay that you cheated on your spouse but hey you're going through a lot of immense and unique pressures so I can really empathize with you and I think that maybe if you just take the time to explain this to your husband and try to seek therapy perhaps you know he'll come around and she's like matter of fact you should have them come over like we we I think that if they see all the progress that you've made your kids and your husband and your mom will probably be so proud and so I think that Amelia is really trying to make Harley feel as comfortable as possible and as you can see Harley seems to feel maybe a little bit better oh wait maybe not where did she go she's kind of just looking around a little lost I think that that pep talk helped a little bit but you know she still can't help but feel sad because she's probably also thinking like wow I'm literally a princess now she's probably feeling like I can't even fully enjoy it with my husband and kids and my mom so she's got a lot of atoning to do and we're gonna see her attempt to do that a little bit very shortly but Eleanor would probably have heard this for sure let's see how close Eleanor was oh yeah she definitely could hear if she and Amelia were like footsteps ahead of her so let's have Amelia kind of confront her a little bit because oh it seems like she might be telling Harry this possibly let's see chat with Harry oh yes she is probably saying to Harry see this girl I knew she was up to no good do you know she's cheated on her husband and and she's using the excuse of you know getting adjusted to this lifestyle and Harry's kind of like tuning his mama out a little bit and he's like mom I'll talk to her about that but this is a lot of pressure on her this is like a whirlwind of emotions for her so I'm not gonna judge her and she's like whatever but I think that she would approach I think she would approach Harley and tell her that she needs to bring her family next time so I think she would make maybe insult one more time like maybe say it in a shady way like make sure you bring your husband and kids because we need to meet them so probably not as mean as this interaction insinuated but Harley is feeling a little bit like defeated tonight and I feel so bad for her because this is her first event and of course it didn't go over smooth it had to be a little bit rocky and that's something she'll probably never forget move Harry shoot so I feel so bad for her this dinner was made to honor her and she is leaving with a sad face which is so sad but that's how the cookie's crumbling for now so we will see Harley's family at the next royal event that she attends as well but that means there's gonna have to be a lot of atonement that takes place in between time so Harley probably snippily says just ever so snippily oh rest assured your highness my family will be there period Okay, you guys so we are in Hanford on Bagley and that little yellow dot you see moving is Harley so this is actually their new cottage and as you can see things have changed since Harley's been home last the royal family started working right away to build them an upgraded cottage they had the option to either have their own castle in this very lot or a cottage and they chose to stick true to their culture and their nature and choose the cottage because they are the cultivators of Hanford on Bagley so it's starting to get dark out I can see but just look at this magnificent build I can't even remember who built this glorious build but oh Emma Jean is here too so Harley did call them to say hey I'm on my way home and that you can see I think that's Dallas there um you know there are still animals that they have is that Queen Leona <laughs> 
Girl, Girl, what are you doing are you out, out here? here? That is hilarious. Oh, but Harley is still sad. She wants to talk to her husband, but I think she's a little bit scared because I was just about to say, you need to go because you're not supposed to be here right now, Leona. This is going to be a little bit tense for Miss Harley, but I just wanted to quickly show you like how beautiful it is out here. I think, is that Luella? Yes, this is Luella. We have not really seen much. Oh no, yeah, this is Luella. Look at her, you guys. She oh my god, she is so adorable. She's probably like, Mommy. Oh my goodness, she is too cute. She is going to be aging up very soon, though. Look at how precious she is. Like, she is just too cute. She's got her daddy's blonde hair, which is funny because all the other kids have brown hair. Okay, I'm doing a horrible camera job. Oh my god, it's just so much house, you guys. Like, even though it's a quote-unquote cottage, it's like a mega mansion cottage. I think they even have this like off suite for um is this maybe for Emma Jean possibly oh yes Emma Jean gets her own part in the house like period honey she can of course stay in this portion if she wants to but I think that is so lovely and then this is where the cows and the farming and animals are at over here the chickens back there oh my god it's so beautiful I'm sorry that it's like I'm acting brand new to this because this is brand new to me too I I haven't like I said my game's been broken I haven't been able to play but oh my god talk about an upgrade you guys stop it okay but Harley where are you at sis oh whoa okay oh <laughs> sorry you guys oh stop why does it keep doing that stop it oh my goodness let me take the walls down what did y'all see this yeah the game's broke Tallulah's like mommy how have you been and she's so happy to see her little babies but you know she she feels a sense of shame coming back too because she probably never ever ever imagined herself to cheat on her husband no matter how hard times were and how stressful oh man I think that she's kind of like beating around the bush even with where did she go <laughs> my god you guys I apologize if it's a little bit chaotic um it's been a minute since I filmed you know so I'm kind of getting back into the swing of things but where is she going oh dad is playing with Luella <laughs> it's so funny seeing the glitchiness of it all with the um preset but it's still cute so she is probably feeling a sense of shame look she doesn't even want to really look at him but you know she wants to see her man and her baby the freak because uh Luella has grown up a lot as y'all can see since she's gone oh no honey no, oh no 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 baby girl no you gotta confront this at some point sweetheart okay you guys I was trying to get her to stop uh because she needs to go on ahead and face this situation like do y'all see how dark it is outside now it's been a little minute so she needs to go on ahead and face the situation and she's sitting up about to cry maybe she needs to cry for the courage we'll let her do it because the game wouldn't let me exit out <laughs> i've noticed with some of the emotional um actions it doesn't let you exit out like when celebrities have an emotional meltdown you can't exit it out and i kind of i, I think that's kind of cool because it's like in real life we can't exit out the negative emotions per se oh is she gonna talk to her mama first let's see how people are feeling temperament wise okay um so her mama's seemingly in a good mood she's probably just happy that harley is back you know her only baby who got who has that over their head i think that was harley i think she's just nervous and doesn't really want to talk to her oh 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 avery is angry so let's have her form a group okay no wait a minute oh oh oh! i need to click on harley wait is she arguing with her mama be yelled at by emma jean <gasps> oh shoot i'm shook because emma jean is usually really passive and non-confrontational but she's probably like you know she might be a little bit angry with her daughter like a little bit i'm sick at this horrendous angle meanwhile monroe is like can y'all get out my bed so i can go to sleep please so i think that maybe emma jean is on her knees begging her mother's forgiveness and her mom is like you know what i must admit i have felt very frustrated with you because you did not really give me a chance to explain this situation to you and you act like i've just held this from you your whole life i did not know your father was the king don't you think that i would have definitely tried to pursue a better life for us if i knew that and harley's like well mom you gotta understand like this all 
all came at me all at once and she's like honey it came at me all at once too how do you think i feel knowing that i had to financially struggle to raise you and gave up my childhood meanwhile your father was a wealthy king married to another woman raising another woman's children while i was struggling to raise you how do you think that makes me feel this has been a lot on me too and harley's probably like damn mom i didn't think about it like that i'm sorry i i want to beg your forgiveness because i i realized i could have been a little bit more empathetic and understanding oh i know you little chickens are thinking about leaving i'm gonna take care of y'all in a minute but i think that emma jean is like you know i forgive you and i hope you can forgive me too oh she's still sad because she knows she's gotta talk to her man's, man's next. next oh is she she's giving herself a pep talk before she talks to him you guys oh she is shook okay but let's see okay she feels a little bit better after her conversation with her mom um seeing her babies playing dolls with her babies so let's see how emma jean is feeling she seems quite happy though energized happy happy looks like she might be sad and angry too maybe oh she she was a little bit irritated so maybe she had a little bit of pent-up anger because you know she kicked emma jean out of the house and avery is like probably was asking her how her conversation went with her and emma jean was like i think it went all right you know give her a chance so i think i'm gonna have harley form a group with avery so that they can um just the two of them them. yeah she'll talk to her kids in more detail probably tomorrow they need to get to bed because it is three in the morning <laughs> I am so sick. Uh, let's have them maybe go down here and talk or something. They need to go somewhere more private and decently lit. So I think they can sit together and chat here. I know Harley is avoiding it, but it needs to happen. She has to confront the situation. And if you guys don't remember what happened, she had a mishap at the club where she woohooed somebody. She got a little bit drunk, a little bit bust and that caused her to have a little less rationale in her thinking and she ended up sleeping with somebody a complete stranger and at the time she was in extreme emotional distress because of just being overwhelmed and bombarded with all this new information but she did not expect for Avery to be as angry as he was to the point where he literally threatened to divorce her wait no he wants to leave where are they going where is he going oh I guess he needs to calm himself down first which that's cool okay um that's fine wait is he going back into the house bruh get your butt back down here you could have did that here okay we're gonna give avery a minute to kind of cool down a bit and then we'll have them talk okay so avery is still upset but he's cooled down a little bit i had to take the door away from them because my sims never know how to act they kept going in the house and playing with the kids and all that stuff so i think that oh she's she's just going right into it okay i didn't even give her an interaction yet chat with avery okay she must be speaking from the heart y'all because i didn't even give them interactions yet but she's like hey honey oh we wait a minute i'm just now noticing their relationship bar before was full you guys oh no and she's still in the negative with her mom okay so she's got a lot of work to do her kids relationships are fine because they don't really understand or know yet what has gone on and they definitely don't know yet what Harley has done but let's have her apologize to him because I think she needs to do that again she did do it once but she definitely needs to apologize again and she's like honey if you want to I can explain in full details to you what all went down because I love you so much and I would never want to risk our family and our love and our children's safety and security but please know you know my heart I I've never imagined or fathomed that I could hurt you in this way and I think that Avery is still is he still angry he's starting to sweeten up a little bit but he's definitely still angry he's probably telling her like some hard truths I'm sure this has to probably be emotionally distressing for Avery as well as Harley but he's like look you know I loved you so much and I still love you but I just have never felt such a gut-wrenching pain girl this is not the time to be on the phone and she's like sweetheart I promise you I understand your anger with me girl where you think you're going because you can't leave oh man 
again. She's just like, I, I don't want to do this. Bless her heart. I know you're not about to sleep. Okay, she wants to cry some more. She is probably saying through the covers like, I know I've caused so much pain to this family and I am so sorry. I have to take accountability from my actions, but please know this has been such a distressing experience for me. You would think that it's been all glitz and glamour. You know, us finally having a taste of prestige and wealth and riches and all that jazz, but it, it's been hard. And Avery is almost like he's going through a range of like happy to be around his wife again but angry because she betrayed his trust and he's trying to empathize and understand her which is why I think we see such a up and down with the like positive reactions than negative you know it's just a very complex situation so he's telling her you know I love you I want to try to make this work um what is this anyways he wants to make it work but he's like honestly right now I've lost my trust in you and that's an important component in a marriage you have to be able to trust your partner so he's like you know maybe if we go to therapy but he told her just know I meant what I said when I told you if something like this were to ever happen again I can't go through this again we will get a divorce so he's very adamant with Harley like don't think just because you're grand duchess now that you're gonna start treating me like I'm not your husband okay so he's not playing with her and he needs her to understand that but I think he is nonetheless happy to have her back around you know Avery held it down while she was gone I'm sure he's gonna be telling her about that for the next couple of days you know he's like I took care of the babies by myself I did all the farming by myself because you kicked your mom out, you know, all that jazz. So I think he's going to be having some more conversations with Harley, but she has a lot of work cut out for her. So she's going to have to do a lot better a lot and I think that some family counseling would be great for them I'm gonna leave them in here for a little bit they have some serious conversing to do so we're gonna give them their alone time so that they can do that okay so we are at the Royal Art Summit Center of Windenburg and this is where the ball actually took place if you have not seen the ball if you, I don't know who would be watching this that hasn't seen the ball but you need to watch it I should have said that in the end intro but I'll put a link in the eye to part one and part two you definitely need to see that to have context for this but we have some royals here in the house let me go to them we have the Newcrest the Komarebis the Windenbergs oh and just Queen Leona from Willow Creek they are dressed more casually because this is a very secret meeting that they are having they do not want you know a lot of people knowing that they're all here but we have Margaret Genovese here we have have King Fletcher, Lauren, Queen Lauren, we have Brayden, we have the Emperor and Empress here and the Crown Prince, we have Jewel and Tony, we have Queen Leona, we have this stranger here who is actually here with the Windenbergs and of course we have the Windenbergs here and then we have Antoine Genovese. Okay so the reason why they are here in this secretive place is because the Newcrest, the Comarebis, and Queen Leona have some explaining to do. They have some some apologies that they have to beg the forgiveness of the Windenbergs for okay so that's why they are here now you're probably thinking what did Leona do and that's a fair question but remember Leona hosted their alliances on behalf of Newcrest, Komarebi, Willow Creek, and Oasis Springs they acted a fool you know so because of that she is embarrassed and you know this could potentially ruin their potential partnership and alliance like this is meant to help build and strengthen alliances and the fact that they went and showed their asses the way they did could make the Windenbergs and their pals say you know what we don't want nothing to do with y'all so because Queen Leona has built a rapport with King Harry we would even consider them to be friends at this point we had to have Leona here as well to kind of do a little damage control if you will so like let's see oh 
she's better friends with Fletcher than that. But for King Harry, let's let me go down a little bit. What is going on with Izumi? Anywho, she has a friendship with him. You know, they're they're still getting to know each other, and of course, she wants to build on that relationship, and so she's gotta do a little damage control first. So let's have Leona go over and maybe chat with Adeline friendly introduction and get to know her oh some of the Windenbergs if you see them looking sad I guess somebody that they knew passed away I really don't know who though um that had me shook at first because oh child who who are these people how does how does Eleanor know okay she doesn't really know her that well but anywho must have been some random townies that they somehow knew even the babies were upset so it's whatever I'm gonna let them mourn their little not their little loss but you know their loss anywho we have Leona here. She's probably going to go around and just chat with everybody. Just trying to, you know, like I said, do damage control. But we need to have uh, Tony and Lauren and the Genovese's and Newcrest go apologize first. So I think that they would, they should try to, I think, apologize to Dowager Eleanor. And I think Eleanor is trying to lighten up the mood a little bit too by playing the games with Tony. Because Lord knows Eleanor does not play games games okay so I don't know who she thinks she's fooling being on this game control Lauren at least whoa uncomfortable why are you uncomfortable maybe oh what am I saying why is she uncomfortable they don't like conflict so this is kind of embarrassing for Lauren and Fletcher and most definitely uncomfortable because this is a huge remember huge scandal huge scandal for their kingdom of international embarrassment so let's have Lauren go over and introduce herself to Ella Eleanor, uh, friendly? Oh, maybe she'd give her a gift. Oh, you know, Lauren is good for giving a gift, baby. <laughs> okay, remember when she gave Louie $10,000? She's about to do the same with Dowager Eleanor. So that'll help them become good friends. Money always butters a, butters a girly up. So let me control Margaret as well. And actually, I'm gonna put them in a little mini group real quick. Okay, guys, so you know how it goes. With my series, my sims don't know how to act, so I have to lock them in rooms. So it's a little bit chaotic. Ooh, Jewel's looking a little bit stressed but I have them kind of all in this central location and Lauren and Margaret especially are particularly apologizing to Dowager Eleanor because you know they're the women and the kind of elders of this group and Jewel is just kind of standing there a little bit oh really girl this is not the time this is not the time for pictures but anywho Antoine some of the guys are standing around a little awkward Fletcher was a little bit awkward I think Antoine's trying to butter up the Dowager Queen. Um, but they basically are just talking and I can't. Maybe they're doing a little bit of fake friendliness. Like I said, this is about damage control. But Margaret and Lauren especially are sincerely apologizing to the Queen and saying, you know, our children meant no disrespect. We know that this did some irreversible damage to your people, but they will do whatever it takes to rectify this situation because we had a wonderful time at the ball and we are definitely still interested in alliances with your kingdom and Eleanor is saying you know I know most people wouldn't think that a bed would have much significance so it's it's kind of understandable kids do silly things without thinking about the consequences in full so she's like you know I have two boys one is a grown-ass man who still acts like a child sometimes talking about <coughs> <laughs> so she understands and she's like you know unfortunately the paparazzi took this story and ran with it and blew it up way bigger than it had to be but we can definitely have our public relations team work with them to figure out what would be a good solution for this to go over with our people well because that's what Eleanor and you know Harry and all of Windenburg cares most about. Margaret is a little bit shook it seems Oh, Lauren is too. Look at that face. Jewel is standing over there apologizing. I think Tony has kept his distance because you know they are on punishment. And they're not supposed to be in contact with each other. So she doesn't want to cause more of a scene, especially if she's supposed to be here apologizing. So I think Margaret and Lauren are still kind of like buttering up King Harry and they're probably like internally thinking like, okay, that went a little bit better than we thought it would. So they should be pretty happy. But don't get it twisted. 
Jewel and Tony are still very much on punishment. Like, it, wait a minute. Nobody's fighting, are they? I just had to make sure, y'all. I just had to make sure. I think that Queen Leona is probably also, like, apologizing to Amelia for their behavior and saying, you know, I personally know Tony and Jewel very well and they don't typically behave in such a manner so I don't think this would be a pressing issue in the future. So Amelia is kind of also explaining the same thing to Leona like hey we just want you to know oh why is Leona looking like that this is some creepy ass glitch but anywho yeah she's just explaining like trust me it wasn't as big of a deal to us as it was the media even though it was very disrespectful you know and she's kind of explaining to her the history and significance of that bed and why it was so disrespectful. So basically the story of Queen Anne. So first if you don't remember uh well I'll say this. Go to this timestamp on this episode. Oh that's so lovely. I'm so happy ladies. Um go to this timestamp on this episode to see King Charles's backstory. That will give you some context as to what the significance of this story is. We'll just show everybody doing their thing. But anywho, so the backstory is Charles Moniker was adopted by Queen Anne because she was unable to give birth. And a lot of people were in an uproar because they felt like Anne should have had a bloodline person be the heir. So this caused a lot of controversy and some extremists set the palace on fire. And they did so again because they were unhappy with an heir being someone not of Queen Anne's blood. The only item that was salvaged was her bed, which was free of flaws and scars despite the fire and chaos. So although it is just a bed, it signifies the tribulations that the people overcame against opposition and reminds them of their late queen. So that's why that bed is showcased in this exhibit as like a national treasure that is to be respected and guarded at all costs. And I think you can see from Jules' demeanor here, she shook because she did not realize that, oh, she being real respectful now. Auntie who, now that we've got them out the way, we need to, sir, who are you talking? Is he talking to Lauren like that? Oh, honey, no. We're not, we're not gonna do that today. You know Brayden is a hothead, but he and, oh, Foucault sitting right here. So, oh, maybe he's mad because Foucault is giving his side of the story to Harry first. Oh, he's like just being around this MF effort is nauseating. I cannot. Okay, so let's get into that. So the other reason why we're here is because Brayden and Fuko need to apologize for their behavior. Literally a bitch died. Okay, so that's a big deal. Okay, so they have all kind of gathered in the place. Oh, Lauren is so overwhelmed. Bless her little heart. Okay, but y'all still gotta deal with this. Okay, so now I can reveal who this is. He doesn't even have a name. He's not the most significant and we we will literally probably never see him again but he is a medical examiner so his oh my god wait a minute okay his whoa guys what is going on with this game okay his name is just medical examiner so anywho he's here because if y'all don't remember in the last episode somebody died and they died during Foucault and Brayden's fight so let me control Brayden instead of talking to your sister you need to get your ass over over there okay so they're about to gather they're kind of already somewhat together oh my god what is going on it is literally chaotic energy going on right now everybody's tense sad or angry look at Harry that's not even like him why are you tense looming anxiety from fear of being cheated on please Amelia would never like what's going on maybe he feels a little intimidated like there's some fine ass men in here maybe okay i'm just so like this is not the time for this you guys oh my god okay <laughs> this is so much you guys oh lord i can't <gasps> why are you getting angry at your wife she's not doing anything i could see if she was flirting with somebody but she's <gasps> why wait a minute She's not even flirting with anyone. Like, stop, bro. I guess apologize? I don't know. Child, this is, this a, is mess. a mess. 
Okay, so I got everybody down here in this more confined space so that they can't be as chaotic because it was just like everybody was going through an emotional wreck. Also, for some reason, I can't get rid of this. So wait, maybe if I go into tap mode. Oh, but then I can't control. <laughs> Anywho, you guys are going to have to work with me, okay? Like I said, the game's clearly broke. Okay, but as I was trying to say before, this is the medical examiner. And he is here to reveal the results of the lady's death, Agatha Crumplebottom. That is who passed away at the ball. And she passed away at the same time that Fuko and Brayden were fighting. So that is actually pretty serious because that could be potential murder charges that they're looking at. And that's... That would be wild af two crown princes who came to join alliances end up leaving with murder charges like that's wild so let's have fuko do a res could you do a respectful introduction i guess attempted introduction oh and right now harry is very tense let's just say queen leona is upstairs with queen amelia and eleanor and she's kind of doing her damage control and apologizing up there but it, it was just too much to try to bring everybody in this space you know what i'm saying so let's see uh we can't okay so harry is not feeling fuko um maybe perhaps him trying to run to him and tell his side of the story first maybe kind of turned him off a little bit let's see if he's a little bit more receptive to brayden we don't know how he's gonna be so uh let's do respectful introduction that would be kind of iconic if he did that because that's really what fuko should have done funny how that wasn't even an option for fuko um that is kind of hilarious are you gonna do the respectful introduction or what, Brayden? Like, what's going on? This is just too much. Respectful. Come on. Respectful. Animation error. Oh, he did it. Okay, great. That would probably make Fuko like low key seethe. And Akiro and Lena were probably like, yes, icon. Because their son get on their nerves. They love their son, but he gets on their nerves because he causes them a lot of headaches because of his problematic behavior. And instead of focusing on apologizing like he should, Fuko is like, I demand and you to give me the results of this minuscule autopsy report and the medical examiner is saying to him sir your highness i would be glad to but i have to do so at king harry's orders we're finalizing the report it will be available momentarily so let's have lauren and fletcher and lena let's at least have like lena do a respectful introduction let's have her discuss his stress mood maybe i don't know <laughs> she they're, they're trying to not gossip girl this is not the time for gossip seems like she at least has enough of a relationship to where oh they don't really know each other like that interesting okay well anywho let's just say the coma rebbies and the new crest are confronting king harry not confronting per se but approaching king harry at the same time begging his forgiveness for their inappropriate actions at least brayden's and fuko's because the parents didn't do anything wrong meanwhile fuko could care less to apologize he's just demanding the the autopsy results and the medical examiner is telling him in the most polite way possible that he cannot do that until King Harry says it's okay and maybe Harry is starting to get frustrated because this event is a little bit exhausting they were probably thinking this is just gonna be a quick little conversation and he's like oh okay he's he's starting to mellow out a little bit so that's good Lauren always on her phone like an inappropriate ass monarch like girl this is not the time for that but anywho I feel like King Harry would say you know guys I know that you guys are still young and i get it you know because harry is a little bit older than fuko and brayden they're in their early 20s harry's in his late 20s so there's a little bit of time for maturity there and he's saying to them you know i get it you guys don't seem to like each other but i must admit it rubbed me the wrong way considering that this event theme was unity you would think you could at least like pretend to be unified at a new event and i think that maybe harry Harry is starting to check out a little bit like mentally or whatever because now even he's getting on his phone like probably thinking like oh god when is this gonna be over but the reason why he's also tense is because he's like you know somebody died that was a really important part of Hanford on Bagley which is a new addition to our kingdom so that's very problematic and if this autopsy determines that you guys caused her death well you're gonna get hit with murder charges and Raiden is like oh my god what did you see that smoke coming out of his ears like that oh my god let me go click on brayden real quick brayden 
Brayden, where you at? Brayden. Brayden. I know I'm controlling him. I have never, ever seen somebody blow smoke out their ears like that. Oh, he's ill? He's tense and ill. I cannot. Okay, that's not good. Poor Brayden. He's probably pissed because he's seeing that Fuko is not really taking any ownership of his actions and his behavior. He is just kind of making himself look worse by trying to demand these results. And yeah, that's not a good look for Fuko. And so it's making Lena and Akiro kind of look bad because, you know, their son is how old he's supposed to represent the monarchy lineage. And y'all come across as so sweet and kind and nice. And your badass, disrespectful son doesn't even have respect for kings, you know? just being rude and trying to demand results so that is not a cute look and that is definitely something that harry notices so he's probably like okay well you know you're forgiven by me because i get it it was a dumb little fight but it did rub me the wrong way so it would be great if you guys would make a public apology and also empress lena is telling king harry by the way they are going to be going on a camping trip soon for bonding experiences because this behavior will not continue in the future so lena is putting her foot down and brayden is like you know i'm willing to work on things but clearly somebody isn't and fletcher is like okay brayden that's not that you don't need to do that this has been oh he is getting really pissed okay so this has been a chaotic mess. They keep on waving hi to each other. I do not know why. We're going to end this part and go on to the next thing. Jesus Christ. at the Esponza Castle and I forgot to mention this. I don't know how I forgot to mention this, but we are finally in the summer season. You guys, what I typically do in the series is I try to keep up with our actual seasons in real life so that when Christmas time rolls around, it like makes sense and whatnot. But y'all, I've been so behind. Um, we are just now hitting summer, which is really something. But you wouldn't be able to tell from the weather today. Ooh, that girl was running running child you wouldn't be able to tell with the weather and that is because of this storm i've never seen it actually like rain and storm like this in my game so that's kind of wild but i do think that it is very fitting with the topics that we're going to talk about today whoa um the kids are at school right now i don't know why ariana is not um i have no idea because she most definitely should be at school maybe she got out of school early or something i don't know i guess technically they would have a summer break right but the other kids are at school so I'm gonna have her go down and do her homework or something because I don't want her to hear this conversation just yet um Leona and Jarrett have dismissed their staff well not dismiss them but they have sent them elsewhere so that they're not like able to listen in on this conversation so I will have wait they moved so fast they were literally upstairs what <laughs> Oh, they're both emotionally out of it. Okay, wait, okay. I was gonna have Leon, or I was gonna have Ariana sit here. I'll have her sit here and let's see, can she do her homework? Um, inventory, do homework. Well, okay, guys, this, this episode is wild AF. I'm so sorry. Um, I promise. I think it's just because I've been out of it a little bit. I, it's been several months since I've even played The Sims, unfortunately. So I, I think it's just I'm needing to get back into the swing of things so yeah i think that's what it is um but rest assured some fun and exciting things are coming so just bear with me hurry up ariana now you wait until after i tell you to teleport here to walk your ass down <sighs> that is such an ariana thing to do do your homework girl do your fucking homework anywho now that she's down here doing her homework by the time jared and leona get back to their freaking room the kids will be home which is so annoying because that's literally what i was trying to avoid but anywho we're just gonna go with the flow on this shit okay 
okay excuse my language but it already has trigger warnings so if i have to swear a little bit more i will okay i have been filming for like five hours at this point so if if i gotta swear i'm gonna swear period okay okay guys so leona and jared are in their room and they the kids are kind of away and this is a really serious and hard conversation and revelation so they're both crying it out at the moment i think that leona would probably apologize to jared because she has not been able to be there for him and comfort him after this news because you know they had these events to go to and she's just now getting back jared came back right after the ball but leona had to stay for a couple days to apologize you know so she's been busy with her queen duties but you know this is her husband this is the love of her life so she wants to be there for him so she probably is like sweetheart let's see if we have the apologize um option actually okay it looks like they're at least oh wait i'm clicking on jared no freaking wonder let's see can leona apologize okay let's let's apologize because you know that's that's not good she did try to be there for him but he was like no you know like we gotta go do this shit you know so she's apologizing to him and she's probably asking him like do you feel comfortable telling me more about this and one thing that i want to be clear um basically if you did not watch or did not see the story post basically what happened was right before the event uh they got into an argument because she queen leona was putting pressure on princess diana because princess diana is a loner and they got into an argument about it because they have a beautiful marriage but their one sore spot is their disciplining styles and they got into a heated argument about their differences in that moment when it was like okay we gotta go we don't have time for this we're gonna be late for the event and jared revealed to leona that he was abused as a child and that is why his parenting style is so laxed in comparison to Leona's and that was of course devastating not only for Jared to have to reveal but for Leona to learn about her husband they've been married for years you know that it's like she had no clue and they have been doing therapy to try to improve on their marriage um so not only that but Jared revealed to Leona that when she tries to parent so strictly in the manner that she does it causes it it it, it triggers him and that's why he responds so adversely in comparison to her so she interpreted this as more of him like trying to be rebellious because she's the queen and she calls the shots and stuff so it was really a misunderstanding and miscommunication both of their parenting styles have their pros and their cons um based off of what you guys have told me a lot of you guys feel like leona is quite problematic which i do think is very interesting and then some of you feel that jared is problematic because you know with his style of parenting there's a uh, definitely a more of a need for discipline but with Leona's style of parenting, it's like follow what I say or else type of deal. So now that this is, oh, they're flirting and stuff now. Okay. I feel like in reality though, this is something that's definitely going to be coming up more frequently in their therapy sessions. And I'm sure Leona was probably like, Jared, why didn't you tell me this sooner? We've been married for so many years and you never told me this before. And he's saying, honestly, I didn't feel like I had a safe space to do so because you act as though you're the final authority in our parenting and it kind of just makes him feel like that small meek child again that was abused you know so what jared is saying is like i love you and i don't want you to feel like every time you being a mom that that's a trigger for me but i do think that it's very obvious that we need to come to a healthy compromise so leona is telling him like my heart 
heart was hurting so much the whole time that I was at the event ever since I heard this news. So she's been really thinking and she decided she's going to go ahead and end Ariana's punishment because she has been on punishment for a very long time and some of you felt like it was time for her punishment to end anyways. So she's going to end the punishment. She has apologized to Diana already but I think that Leona is going to be more willing to be a little bit less uptight about the rules but I do think she also feels like you know I agree with you that there has to be a healthy compromise but that does have to entail us being able to discipline our children but she is going to seek out getting some solo therapy for her husband as well as continuing to dialogue and navigate through this situation as a married couple and as parents so I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that on here because I know not everybody follows the Instagram but that is a major story update So we are at the Oasis Springs Palace and love is the topic of discussion today. Okay. We're going to tune in real quick before they have to go to school. No, did Baki leave already? No, Baki, get your butt back here. I'm about to take these walls down or, you know, it's, oh, look at Abdul is coming. Is that Abdul? Wait, whoa, 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 lady who? Oh, that's the housekeeper. Okay. Baki and Jasmina were sitting over here. <laughs> But they're both gone now. Come back here, Baki. Sit and chat here. No, I don't want you to chat with Anaya. Um, sure, turn it in. I don't care about that. Where is Jasmina? Where is Jasmina? Where is Jasmina? Where is Jasmina? Okay, you guys. So we haven't seen Prince Baki and his lady Jasmina in a while, but um, I wanted to bring them together because they're gonna make it official today. If, of course, if Jasmina wants to. They've been courting each other. They met in class and they like each other a lot but Jasmina's father well both her parents really were very protective of her because they did not know how they felt about their daughter joining into a courtship with a member of the royal family they just want her to lead as normal of a life as possible and they don't know if like Baki's a playboy or whatever they might have the preconceived notion of him being royal but they have been courting for a long time and Baki has gained the trust of of Jasmina's parents and Jasmina seems to be well liked by the Sultan and Sultana. They think that they make a cute couple and so Baki is going to look at how cute they are. Wait a whoa 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 whoa. Look at how cute they are together. She's so cute and pretty. So let's have Baki since he seems to not have many words. Let's see if he will ask her to be his girlfriend. Mm. Please don't get up, Baki. Oh, maybe we have to do a few more interactions first. Baki, get up. Oh, it popped up. Oh my God. Okay, we're just gonna wait. Yeah, oh, maybe he needed that confidence boost. Where are y'all going for this kiss? Oh, so cute. These doggone teleporter knights ruined it, but that's so cute. Okay, I'm so happy. He learned that she's unflirty. How is, is unflirty a legitimate sim trait? What? I don't know. She seems mighty flirty with him. But even though it says that, that ain't canon because she's gonna be dealing with Mr. Maki. Okay, let's compliment her appearance and say you look so beautiful, blah, blah, blah. I'm really feeling your growl. And can he ask her to be his girlfriend oh no we wouldn't do that um I yo maybe they have to exchange promise rings or or have him declare his love I don't know that he'd be like full-blown like I love this girl because they're not even in a relationship yet he knows he wants to be with her I guess Baki is telling her to come inside oh wait wait I'm missing stuff I'm missing stuff hurry up oh did they kiss again oh now that's something I didn't even tell them to do that's so cute. Oh, they're just going ham on these kisses now. I can't. No, Baki, get off your phone so you can ask her. Ay yo, maybe it won't allow you to be with somebody who's unflirty. But even if somebody is unflirty, that doesn't mean that they, you know, don't want to be with somebody necessarily. Can you exchange promise rings then, maybe? Okay. 
Okay, so they exchanged promise rings. I don't think I got the best shot of that, so I do apologize. So I think that because she somehow has this trait of being unflirty, it's not allowing him to pursue a relationship with her. But I'm just so disappointed because, <laughs> oh my God, no. Just promised himself to Jasmina. Oh my goodness, how cute is that? Well, maybe, okay, so maybe it's just not time yet. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like all that little kissing they just did and whatnot, that would have been a beautiful moment. But, you know, maybe she's feeling unflirty in the moment because she was a little bit nervous, wasn't expecting that. So we'll have to respect that. So maybe next episode she might be ready to be in a relationship. But at least you guys got to see Baki and Jasmina. They're clearly very much so in tune with each other and feeling each other and having a good time. And they're ready to take it to the next step, but maybe not in this episode. And that's okay. Oh, interestingly enough, you guys, Chea, Princess Chea is here which uh she came to hang out with Rakim but she does not see him around so she's probably a little bit sad like oh my goodness did Rakim stand me up so that's probably why Chaya is feeling out of sorts but oh my goodness look at Raja Raja needs to be cleaned it look honestly I don't know if it's, he's getting old or what, but he looks kind of uh, dirty, doesn't he? I think I'm going to have uh, Raju give him a bath. Oh, Raju is feeling cyber right now. But anywho, I know it's pause. Please forgive me. But yeah, he needs a bath. Okay. Oh, here's Rakim to comfort Chaya. He's like, silly goose, I would never stand you up. So they're going to play. Raju is lecturing Raja for a minute. Before he gets his bath, he looks funky. Oh. Like Raja was really going on like bro something ain't right but look at these two they're so cute i can't don't forget you guys these two have expressed all oh, rajas learned not to attack good boy because that was very problematic behavior raja was having good boy but anywho okay so maybe raju is saying to one of the butlers to clean raja but while chaya and rakim were monkeying around it seems as though ashmal got an, a phone call and Aaliyah says she's on her way she just wants to hang out and kick it for a minute and she was wondering if anaya was available too but it, i believe anaya is on on a date with her mans. Yeah, Anaya's not interested. Oh yeah, Aaliyah will be right over. Okay, Aaliyah, come on, girl. Okay, you guys, so Aaliyah is here, and what I found very interesting is that she's flirty right now, which, why is she flirty? Coming over here to talk to Ajmal, I don't know, but maybe she, oh, it says she's, her dream in life is to find the perfect match. It's time to choose the soulmate aspiration and get working towards her goals. Hmm. You know, she, both her besties, Ajmal and Anaya, are involved. Oh, Che is leaving. Okay, she must have had her her nice little fun. What? 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 Hold on. Hold the freak on. Who is this? Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Who is this? I don't know who this is. Is she just a random person? Hold on. Okay, wait, 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 you guys. Hold on, hold on. Who is this? Okay, so Aaliyah is here to chit chat and talk with Ajmal. Where is Ajmal at? Um, Aji, Aji where, are, where you? are you? Okay, so we finally have Ajmal and Aaliyah together. And y'all, I wish you had seen it, but she was looking real smitten, which I think is very interesting. But uh, let's have Ajmal. Oh, shoot, I gotta go out of tab mode. Let's have Aj Ajmal. Blah. Sorry guys. Let's have Ajmal say hello. Um, you can't just say hi to your friend. Like, like, ask about it. Sure. Okay, get a move on it, honey. So Ajmal has been actually wanting to talk to Aaliyah for a hot little second. He's wanting to confront Aaliyah a little bit, but he knows she's feisty and she's not having it. So he's not really fully looking at her in the eyes, but uh, she's not even letting him fully talk. You see, they're both talking, but Ajmal is basically saying, you know that that wasn't cool what you did at the ball. I know you were trying to help us out, but 
you have to respect that Clara and I have to do things on our own time. And if you don't remember, and there will be a story post eventually, and I apologize, you, you know, as I said, things have been delayed AF, but there will be a story post just going over that situation. But you know, she was trying to almost force Clara and Ajmal to dance, which is kind of ridiculous, you know? They already feel awkward around each other. So, you know, Aaliyah has been butting in a little bit too much lately. You know, when the girls were together with Adeline, uh, she confronted, she and Clara had a conversation and now Ajma is having a conversation with her. And so, uh, Aaliyah is not having it. She's like, oh no, 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 no. You're not about to make me feel bad for that. Aji, because that's her nickname for him. She's saying, look, Aji, you don't have as much time left as you think. Do you not realize that these blogs are writing about you too and your lack of love and they're coming up with all types of theories for what's going on and Ajmal's like I don't care what the blogs think I don't care about those blogs I know that it's not true but Aliyah's like but what about what Clara thinks don't you think that she seems a little standoffish and I just don't get it because I think you're stunningly gorgeous and you're going to be a sultan for god's sakes like she's going to get what she always wanted and be a queen so I really just don't get her I'm not trying to be rude or nothing but I don't get her you know and Ajmal is like wait a minute hold on hold on stop the brakes you think i'm not and Aaliyah's like look i didn't say all of that i didn't say all that okay but it's no secret that you're attractive but that doesn't mean i want you or anything and she's like don't you think i'm pretty and ashmal's like i think you're very beautiful but i get what you're saying like i've never looked at you in that way before you know and Aaliyah is saying you know i get it i know it's complicated because it's an arrangement but i don't think your parents will die if you marry for love you know what I mean they did it can you say that you love Claire honestly like be truthful with yourself can you say that you love her Ashmal is you know being honest with her he's like I can't really say that because I feel like we're at a disconnect but I want to love her and I know that when we get married I can be whatever she wants me to be and whatever she needs and I just wish that she could see that too and like make the best of this situation and Ashmal is saying look I appreciate your concerns but I want you to lay off you know that I don't need that extra added layer of stress and tension on this situation ship or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Aaliyah is trying to be helpful but she's being a little bit too involved like she's trying to force this to work and that's not how life works. You gotta let people do things in their own way, in their own time. And I know it's extremely irritating to everybody because it's been so long and no real update yet into their status, but it is what it is, you know? Nobody can make it happen. Ashmal's like, but since you're so interested in love all of a sudden, who have you been looking for partner-wise? Like, have you been dating anybody or anything? Like, let's, let's send this over to you. And Aaliyah's like, look, you don't need to worry about me. I'm not about to be the Sultan. I think that that's really funny that she's like, don't worry about me. <laughs> but oh, little did Ajmal and Aaliyah know, but uh, they have an unexpected visitor here. And we're about to see that in just a second. Okay, you guys, so we are here for this seemingly very serious looking conversation. We have the new crest monarchs over here. Monarchs over here for Oasis Springs. Clara and Ashball in the middle. And the parents are confronting them as expected. Lauren and Fletcher aren't going to do as much talking because Syra and Raju know how they are. They're pretty much uh, lifelong friends at this point. So they know each other very well. But they wanted to come together to kind of see like what's taking so long. Why have they not made any progress in their relationship and why they didn't take the opportunity when they had it to dance with each other. So I think that Ashmal, especially given the conversation that he just had with Aaliyah, is just kind of a little bit out of it, if you will. So he's just wanting to hear what Claire's having to say and he's not looking at her because he's nervous. He probably is anticipating the worst, but he also doesn't want to make her feel pressured so he's not looking directly at her but like he's a little bit discombobulated you can see in his demeanor just a tinge Clara is speaking first because you know Raju and Syra they're like you know we just couldn't help but notice is everything going to be okay between you guys so Clara is saying she was just very
very nervous in general at the event. She felt out of sorts and a little bit anxious. And she's saying that it was because of being there near Prince Fuko. But if you guys remember, you know, Empress Lena assured her that Fuko would not bother her anymore. So I think that maybe, oh, and the thing is, yeah, I just remembered um, Fletcher and Lauren don't know about this. Um, if you don't remember, the reason why Claire does not like Fuko is because he made some advances at her and she declined and he respected that you know as respectful as Fuko can but basically uh that made her feel really uncomfortable because of the power dynamic involved at the time Fuko's family was helping her father so she kind of almost felt a sense of pressure that made her feel very uneasy and it made her kind of assess that he's a person who would abuse power and all that jazz but anywho long story short that's the reason she's saying that she had an issue and so i feel like her parents would probably say something let me see is lauren speaking fletcher's just kind of listening and not saying anything so he's probably subliminally telling lauren like yo you can speak on this and so Lauren is saying, honey, I'm not sure, you know, what Foucault has done to you, but I could talk to the Empress about it. But this has been something that's been going on for years, even before you knew Foucault. So you two just seem quite distant and we're just trying to get to the bottom of it because y'all are supposed to be getting married and Brayden is getting married soon and you are his twin. So you guys should be at that point, right? Claire is, she's looking at Ajmal. I think she's trying to to gauge his sense of emotion but Ajmal as you see is trying to keep it cool and neutral he's trying to put on a poker face I feel like but anywho Clara is saying I don't think anything negative of Ajmal at all but I just I feel a sense of awkwardness I feel like as long as we've known each other it's just a sense of awkwardness there and we really haven't gotten to know each other on the deep level as we should and maybe she's trying to blame it on his royal duties but I feel like Clara is maybe feeling something a little bit deeper that she's not ready to share. And you know, unfortunately in her family, they don't really navigate tough situations very well. So she probably wouldn't feel comfortable enough to say what her true like underlying issue is. But she's saying basically that she feels like they don't know each other that well and she therefore hasn't really felt comfortable progressing forward so Rashi was saying I can definitely understand that somewhat but I will say you know it has been several years so remember they this agreement for their arrangement of marriage was made literally years ago at this point they had just turned into teenagers and now they have been young adults for a while so it has been several years because Brayden and Adeline's arrangement was made around the same time and Brayden and Adeline are about to get married so they don't even have the title of boyfriend and girlfriend yet let alone anything past that it is known by the world that they are courting and they're arranged to be married but really when you see like the paparazzi pictures and the discussions are always on Brayden and Adeline, never Clara and Ajmal, because they really don't give off that vibe of a genuinely happy couple. And so Raju is saying, I respect what you're saying, princess, but I feel like there might be something a little bit more to this because you do know each other. You've known each other for years. Our families are great friends. So you've had the opportunity to get to know each other. And I I know my son's been busy with his royal duties but nonetheless you guys haven't even had the title of girlfriend and boyfriend yet and so Raja is saying or not Raja y'all I'm sorry Syra is saying she's probably asking Ashmal how he feels about that statement and suggesting maybe they should try couples therapy so yeah they heard what Claire has to say and they want to hear what Ashmal is thinking about things look at them they kind of look like they want to sink through 
through the floor. They do not look like a couple that's in love or getting ready to get married or any of that. And I think Ashmal said, give me just a second to think before I speak. Okay, so Ashmal is finally getting a chance to talk and he is basically saying, you know, I must admit to you all, I think that we both could be doing a better job. Oh, and he's even t looking at Clara now saying this and she's not looking at him anymore. She looks a little guilty, geez. But he's saying, I think we both could have done a better job trying to get to know each other. I know that I've been nervous because I believe Claire is just so beautiful. And sometimes I struggle with feeling like I deserve to be loved by her. And I feel like I've been trying to be romantic or be supportive. And I just don't feel like the love is there from her yet. We do have our moments where we get along well and we've been decent friends, but I just don't know if we're on the same page. Like I, I don't want to marry someone who doesn't want to be married to me, but I've been so scared to say that to Clara and it's nerve wracking sharing this right now. And if you look at Clara, she's looking quite emotional and like something is just eating her up inside that she wants to share but she seems too afraid to do so and I think that what Ashmal said was quite a fair statement like he's noticing the disconnect and he's tried you know he's taken her on a few dates he has tried to be supportive for her when she was dealing with the thing with her father and he's tried to be there for her and Ashmal hasn't had that many um difficulties per se in regards to his life that she's needed to support him for but there's literally no spark or connection between them and he he feels a sense of defeat by that I think so I think it was extremely brave of him to finally admit that and that's something that uh has been kind of eating at him for a while now but now Clara has something obviously eating at her but he's kind of like looking at her like what is your response to this and everybody else kind of is too and she does not want to say anything she's like probably internally like I can't do this right now but she knows with her past actions at this particular palace she doesn't feel like she can just run away from this so she's standing still kind of just like internally panicking so I feel bad for the two of them because what the parents are about to say next is going to have them both shook. Okay, you guys. So, uh, it's funny because, you know, Lauren doesn't like to do confronting and neither does Fletcher. But once Ajmal finished saying what he had to say, Lauren got a look from Raju and a look from Syra. Like, girl, we're going to pass it off to you. And Fletcher looked at her like, take the wheel, honey, because... I can't do it. So just know Lauren is extremely uncomfortable and uneasy saying this, especially seeing both of their kids reaction. I think that none of the parents were fully expecting this level of depth from this situation to take place. But what they are about to tell their kids, Lauren is about to say, this event was based off of appearances and trying to join alliances. We made such an embarrassment of ourselves in New Crest Kingdom with Jewel acting out, Brayden getting into that fight with Fuko, Marky Duncan getting into a fight, it made us look very bad. And we need to be able to strengthen our alliances. And this is a very rare opportunity where it is gonna be a multi-kingdom partnership. You want to have friends, not foes. So us and your parents, you know, me, your dad, Ajmal, your mom and dad, we decided to go on ahead and seal the arrangement for your marriage and you all are going to officially be engaged because we need to do something to make our kingdoms look more united because 
that was a very bad look for our portion of the alliance because remember right now there's two separate alliances the alliance we're familiar with at this part in the story is Newcrest, Oasis Springs, Komarebi, and Willow Creek and they're all in an alliance and then Windenburg has their kingdoms that they're aligned with and this event was to create this united massive alliance of these multiple kingdoms and pretty much all of the division that took place happened within their own alliance and they're not having that. Windenburg is side-eyeing them and the other countries are hesitant to join alliances with them because they seem to not even be able to be united themselves. So to combat this, they're going to have Clara and Ajmal go ahead and get married. So she's telling them, you're going to go ahead and get dressed, take some engagement photos. You two are officially engaged and we're going to help you start planning your wedding soon because you all have been arranged to be married and the clock is ticking. You're not getting any younger and we need to make sure that we have things in order for the next generation so whether they like it or not whether they are genuinely in love or not the two parties have decided they will continue forward with the arrangement that they made for their children so with that being said we've got another couple so now not only are they together look at Rakim in the background I'm sure oh wait a minute let's see how how is Claire feeling about this I can't with Rakim in the background um I Jamal is seeming kind of sad because he's saying I was hoping I would get to earn Clara's love and her consent to marry me. I, I feel pathetic right now that you guys are making her marry me. Okay, Claire. Oh, wow. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Claire looks really upset. Oh, did you guys see that? It's like she was trying to wipe away a tear. And Ashmal is saying, you know, I should be happy right now, but I feel like I don't know how to feel because it seems as though this isn't going to be a happy thing for the both of us. Why should we have to? Oh, see, it looks like she's Claire's going, uh oh. She Claire is going through a range of emotions. She seems emotionally distraught. I'm sick. Anywho, I think that this is a bit shocking for the two of them because, you know, everything has been so stagnant for so long that they didn't think somebody was going to necessarily force this upon them. So whether they were ready or not, y'all are engaged. So what's going to happen between the two? Oh, everybody's dazed. I'm sick. Um, what's going to happen now wait let me okay literally as i was about to finish talking you see this clara is now leaving so geez okay she's not even giving where, where did she, is she already gone let me see oh she's in the other room but she's like yeah i gotta go so she didn't know this but when she came in there was a lady you know one of the royal staff members who offered to do a henna tattoo for Clara. And she said, of course, sure. But she, what she didn't know is that this was for her engagement photos. So we will see her photos and she will be, um, you know, now preparing along with her brother to get married. And um, I think that the parents do have the cognizance to see because, uh, you know, I would say that Syra and Raju are far more emotionally intelligent. And I don't mean like they're just bound smarter than Fletcher and Lauren. Not, I'm not calling them dumb. But clearly there's a lack of emotional intelligence on their part because they cannot navigate conflict resolution well. And so, you know, Raju... And Syra looked kind of upset seeing their son so upset. You know, they had initially agreed to this marriage arrangement so long as both their kids consented. But now this is more of a political or a power thing happening. So that is upsetting for them because they don't want to go back or rescind on their agreement. Because if they do, not only could their own alliance fall apart, but their potential partnership would definitely not stand. So Ajmal is looking a little bit upset because he was maybe thinking like we're getting older, things might get a little bit smoother for us and she might 
connect with me naturally but now he feels kind of like robbed of that because of this situation and that can't feel good you know so yeah unfortunately we have to end on this sad note um but i hope that you guys enjoyed this long episode and i promise the next one will not take this long to get up to you guys we are going to have a lot of birthdays in the next episode and then the following one after that will be brayden and adeline's wedding and we will finally see more planning um for ajmal and clara's so i hope that you guys enjoyed this oh one more thing so ajmal and clara are going to be going to couples therapy as well as um they're going to most likely go on a couples retreat either before or after brayden and adeline's wedding they might even go on a kind of honeymoon-esque trip around the time of Brayden and Adeline's honeymoon. It's a matter of what the parents decide because they are now the puppeteers of this marriage, which is really something. So that is the end of this episode. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please give me a comment down below and let me know what you thought of the events that transpired. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.